Hey, welcome to this new tutorial. In this tutorial, we will look at how you can create UV maps inside of the Geometry Notes editor or how you can import your existing UV maps and also export them into your shader editor. And without further ado, let's start Blender 4.1 or 3.5. It's unrelevant. They are all pretty superior. And here we are inside of Blender and let's delete everything as always. And we want to maybe grab a little monkey hat and let's go right into our geometry notes tree. Here, just drag up this window and go into the geometry notes editor. Here, we want to create a new node tree and let's collapse this N panel here how can we now create our UV map? So if we go into the shader editor, click on new and we go into the rendered view. If we grab our texture coordinates and we see we already have a UV map on our Susan monkey hat. I leave this as it is here so we can see our UV map and I'll go back into the Geometry Notes editor. I now want to have my UV map inside of Geometry Notes. How can I do this? I can import it through the group input node. For this, I'll have to use a vector math node and let's plug this into the add socket. Now we have something here. After this, we want to also export our UV map so let's plug it into the group output, plug it into the group output. And we want to first of all, import the UV map. And we want to export it into UV map two. how can we now th see the new UV map. If we go into the shader editor, and we can use the attribute. Here, we can look at UV map two. Here it is. Now we can use this in a noise texture. And we can play around with the scale and everything. But now you see, we have a strange seam here at the top. And we kind of see it if we subdivide our monkey subdivision surface, we have this strange seam here. And this is because we have we have the UV map output in, in the wrong domain. So let's go into our group output. And let's use our panel here. And let's go into our outputs. And we don't want to have this in the attribute domain point, we store the UV map in the attribute domain face corner. And now this works as it is intended. We can change things here in the vector math node. Like we can add something to our UV map. We can also multiply our UV map like this. And we can also scale the whole UV map if you want to do this. And we can also make it a little bit procedural if we distribute points. Distribute points on faces. I'll make this separate and like this. And we want to take the distance with a proximity node. We can use our points and use the distance for the scaling. Obviously, it doesn't work because we are dealing with points. And we have to change the domain from faces to points. And now you can see the points affect our UV map. And you can also use a color ramp, play around with it. And of course, you can also join your points back in here. For this, you can maybe use cycles because here you see your points, your point clouds. And as said, we have, we output our UV map here. So we can use it in the shader editor. And we can use it for a bunch of things for the emission strength and we can use this for the emission color, something like this. But what now 
if you are creating a whole new object inside of geometry nodes. So let's do that real quick. So we will go into the volume, volume cube section, plug that into the geometry like this. The group output is a little bit buggy here. I can't plug something. So this is an alpha. So <laughs> you can expect very strange bugs. So we're using a volume cube here. And I want to use a noise texture, noise texture as the density with a color ramp, of course, set in a scale of three, maybe. And I want to convert this volume to a mesh. Like this, maybe something like this. And now I want to have a UV map on this thing. How can I do this? Um, there are cool notes for this. So if we go into shading, we see that our texture doesn't work. So if we will texture coordinate and we look at our UV map, of course, we have to reassign our material because we are not using the group input. So geometry nodes doesn't know what materials we are using. So we have to use our material set material. And let's use the material 001. And we can see it's pure black. And this is because we don't have any UV map. How can we now get our UV map? It's great that you ask, because there is a wonderful note for this. So we can grab here in the add menu, the wonderful UV unwrap node, and we can plug this into our group output and we output it as UV map two. And in the shader editor, we are already using the UV map two, but as you can see, it's completely back. And this is because we also have to define the seams and we can define our seams if we use our, the mesh data and we want to use the edge angle and I want to use this as seam. Now, of course, geometry nodes is calculating a while, a while, a while. What's going on? Hello, 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 Blender. What are you doing? We have to, of course, take the resolution a bit down. Now it's not that buggy anymore, but we have to, of course, take a math node. And let's say we want to have everything that is less than 0.5 or maybe 0.1. And now we have a relatively working UV map and we can take a look at it in the shader editor on the noise texture. And you can, of course, find other algorithms where you can use your your seams. Maybe you find find other good algorithms that take a seam here in the middle around. But I never found a good thing where I can do that. Here is now our UV map. Of course, it's not perfect, but with fiddling a little bit around, you can also get that. It's not perfect, but it's kind of working. I mean, as said, you have to experiment with it to find how you can create this perfect. You can always view your UV map, how it looks like if you take a set position node and you use that as the position. Now you see that your UV map looks like this and <laughs> it's it's not great, but, and you have also a second node, which is the pack UV islands, if you need this one. And this should be the quick video into how you can create UV maps inside of geometry nodes. I know it's not perfect, but that's because we have a problem dealing with the seams uh, on this complex object. But I hope you learned something anyways. On some objects, this isn't a problem. On most proud objects, this isn't the problem. It's randomly a problem here. I hope you've learned something anyways. And if you don't know, 
I have a material pack of over 200 or 300 materials. You can check that out. The link is in the description. There is also a free version of it. So you can check out a free version of my material pack of around 200 materials that you can use in your project inside of Blender. And with that, I hope you've enjoyed this little guide into UV maps. And thank you all for watching. Hopefully, see you later. Bye.